Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. We're continuing, inshallah, with our study of relativity. And remember, we're doing this for two reasons. Number one, if we are Muslims interested in the creative activity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should know how the universe really works, not how it seems to work. And Einstein's special relativity goes a very long way toward that. It overturned thousands of years of very strong human intuition about how the universe works, as we have seen in the previous episodes. Secondly, I believe, and I hope you agree, that this understanding gives us a richer appreciation of some verses in the Quran. But this understanding, a genuine understanding, doesn't come cheap. It means we have to roll up our sleeves and we have to do some hard conceptual work. And I sincerely hope you're not put off by that because you, frankly, deserve that. You deserve in-depth treatment, not superficial generalities. And the Qur'an certainly deserves that. And science deserves that. And so we will now push on to see some other truly amazing consequences of the special theory of relativity. And for this, we need to introduce the notion of frames of reference, which we've already talked about. But let us look once again in a little bit more detail at the stationary observer. And here's his frame of reference. We call it an X, Y, and Z axis, where any event can be located in space along the three axes. And here's the moving frame of reference. And imagine that it's moving just along the x-axis with the moving observer moving at a speed v. That's his velocity. So at time t, he moves a distance v times t on the x-axis relative to the stationary observer. So the question becomes, if an event happens at a certain coordinate in the frame of reference of the stationary observer, we call that the location is x, y, z, and it happens at time t. What will the coordinates be for the moving observer in his frame of reference, which we'll call s prime, and we'll call those coordinates x prime, y prime, z prime, t prime. In the world of Newton and Galileo, if an event happens out here, this observer will measure it at some distance x. This observer will have already moved some distance along the x-axis, so when he comes to measure that event, his x prime will be less. So his x prime will be less than x for this observer. But the y coordinates are the same, the z coordinates are the same, and certainly time is the same. If an event happens at a certain time, it happens at a certain time for everybody. So this is known as the Galilean transformation. And this says that x prime is just x minus vt. And that makes sense, because if the event happens here, for this observer, it happened at a location x. For the moving observer, he has already moved a distance vt, so we simply take this x and subtract this part vt, and we get that he measures it at x prime, which is x minus vt, but y prime is y, it's still the same location on the vertical axis, z prime is z, and time is absolute, t prime is t. So this is how we understood things for thousands of years. As we saw, relativity taught us that things are different, and the transformations in relativity are given by what are known as the Lorentz transformations, and you see that the equation for x prime is no longer x minus vt, it's x minus vt divided by now our famous gamma factor, 1 minus v squared over c squared. y prime remains y, z prime remains z, but again, time is not absolute. t prime is no longer t. t prime is given by this equation here, 
And what I want you to notice here is that now space and time are amalgamated together. So that time depends on the velocity of the moving observer and on the location where the event occurs. And so we can no longer separate out time and say this event happened in space. And yes, I understand that if I'm moving, I will get a different space coordinate than you will get. But of course, we'll both get the same time. No. Now, my time is different from your time. And that difference depends on our relative velocity and where the event happens in space. So space and time can no longer be separated out. We have to now think in terms of a unified synthesis called space-time. And space-time is really the new synthesis of relativity. And we can think of it like a loaf of bread, that each, lo each slice in the loaf of bread represents a point in time. And across the loaf of bread, this is all space. So we'd imagine that space is two-dimensional and time flows this way. So these are all times, say, in the past. And here, these would be the future. Or if you want to think about it, these can be the past. And we move this way into the future. But every slice represents one slice of time. And events in space move through time. That is how we would think about it in terms of Newton and Galileo, that we can look at any slice and we have events in space and they're all occurring at the same time. And that's a fine way to think about it. And in fact, Professor Brian Greene talks about space-time being a loaf, but in Galilean relativity and Newtonian relativity, we can only slice the loaf one way. We only move through time one slice at a time, and everybody is on this slice, and they experience the same time. Then as time progresses, we move to that slice, and everybody experiences the same time, and so on and so forth. So, the special theory of relativity changed that, because it shows us that there are different ways to slice the space-time loaf, depending on the state of motion. So this loaf can be for the guy, these slices are for the guy who is stationary with respect to each slice of bread, for example. However, there is a very, very amazing implication of motion through space-time. And to preface this amazing implication, let's look at this verse from Surah Luqman. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله عنده علم الساعة وينزل الغيث ويعلم ما في الأرحام وما تدري نفس ماذا تكسب غدا وما تدري نفس بأي أرض تموت إن الله عليم خبير Verily, the knowledge of the hour is with Allah. It is He who sends down rain and he who knows what is in the wombs, nor does anyone know what it is that he will earn on the morrow, nor does anyone know in what land he is to die. Verily with Allah is full knowledge, and he is acquainted with all things. So, because we slice the space-time loaf one slice at a time, we know what's in our past, but we don't know what's in our future. However, one philosophical interpretation of the special theory of relativity is that the entire space-time loaf already exists and this future is known but just not known to us. But that the space-time loaf is already here and that is a consequence of the Lorentz transformations as we will soon see. So it then makes complete sense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the future, but we don't know the future. Why would we think that the space-time loaf is already here? Well, because in this new synthesis, if somebody is moving with respect to me, with respect to me as a stationary observer on this slice of bread, 
they slice the space-time loaf differently. So imagine if somebody cuts it obliquely, not horizontally. If they cut it obliquely, that means that in their slice, as they cut across, here's the way I'm cutting the space-time loaf, my past, my future. But this person cuts it obliquely, and so one of his slices can slice through, say, the past in Los Angeles and the future in New York, and that is his now. That means in his oblique slicing of the space-time loaf, part of his slice could contain my future. And that means my future has to be there because if he is moving with respect to me, he slices this loaf obliquely. And the equations say then that my future is his now. Also, somebody else's past can be his now because as I slice it horizontally, this is now in Los Angeles, this is now in Kansas, this is now in New York, but that's because I'm slicing the loaf horizontally. Somebody who slices it obliquely can slice the future with respect to me in New York, the now in Kansas, and the past in Los Angeles, and that is the slice that he experiences as his now. We will, inshallah, continue with this theme and take a look at how can this relate to verses in the Quran in the next episode because I don't want to be too long in any one episode. I hope, inshallah, we will see you for the next one. Salaamu Alaikum.